stress units. Everyone needs them in the Create mod. In fact, they're the prime resource. They're the one thing stopping you from doing everything you've ever wanted to do. And this absolute behemoth behind me is the pathway to stress units. Oh, sweet steam engines, the big boiler alien looking things that create ads to give you all the power you need. That is the focus of today's episode. I'm not just going to be teaching you how to build them, but we're going to be learning about them together, figuring them out together. And hopefully you'll come away not only knowing how to build this absolute behemoth that produces 300,000 stress units, uh, but also you'll know how to tinker with them, how to make them better, how to make them worse, and how to do them in different mod packs. We're going to be looking at three tiers starting all the way down with this cute little guy and working all the way up to this behemoth. Let's get right into it. Alrighty, let's get started with the early game Steam Engine and of course an explanation as to how these guys work. Uh, you can have 2 by 2s I'll, I'll build a 3 by 3 because the 3 by 3 ones look quite cool. You can see these are all the ingredients in my hotbar. Campfires, fluid tank, steam engine, shaft, vertical gearbox, large cogwheel, and some water. Very cheap. Nothing requires you to have more than iron tools, and I think just a press from Create is enough to do everything here. The way these work is you have to have some form of heat source, and for the super early game steam engines, you just can use a passive heat source, which is any hot block, lava, magma, fire, campfire, uh, and you're going to place fluid tanks on top of them, which also helps with uh, some of the particle effects. Not all of them, but some of them. Uh, and the way you transform this into a steam engine is literally by placing a steam engine block on top of it. Now, these fluid tanks are converted visually, you could see, to a steam engine. While wearing goggles, they tell you some interesting information. They tell you about the size, the water, and the heat. You could say the heat, you can see the heat is low, right? There's red bars, that means the heat's low. And for early passive, we can't do much more than this. There's no water at all, so the water's bad, but the size is quite good, the size is in the green. You can also see it wants 10 millibuckets of water per tick, which we will be able to achieve. And for this, for convenience, we're actually gonna have the steam engine power itself, which I think is very fun, always clever. And the way it can power itself is by running the rotational force downwards okay so you're going to place an outwards facing shaft run that into a gearbox run the shafts downwards into a large cog wheel now we do need some pipes and pumps but once again that's all just copper at no additional expense you're going to dig an infinite water source so that the center of the water source is diagonal to the large cog wheel because we are going to be having our mechanical pump there yep as uh, simple as that we're just going to have that guy vertical oh that's not vertical there we go, vertical. Make sure it's hovering above the water, it's not inside of the water. And uh, this is everything you actually need for your early game steam engine. Totally simple to hand power it with a crank and a large cogwheel. It does have to be a large cogwheel uh, so that this thing spins fast enough to keep the water input. You can see uh, the water is okay, the heat is okay, and the size is very good. Now you can't get any hotter, you can't get any more water with this design, but you do have 2048 stress units, so it's not bad. Um, this can also be done, uh, as you can see, on a 2x2 two two steam engine. Of course, we need to make sure that the water is actually flowing into this thing. Uh, and one annoyance of these really early game ones, if you're powering it manually, if it unpowers, you do have to restart it yourself. Um, but here we go. You can see that the 2x2 two two also works just fine. So it's very space effective, especially if you're building in like underground environments. Um, obviously, this water source can be anywhere you want. And the way it works is the water is pulled in through the pipes. It goes into the fluid tanks, is immediately evaporated and turned into steam. Using better and more heat sources, more water input, and more tanks creates more power. So why don't we get into that more power right now? The more power in question is blaze burners, which uh, are also not that expensive. I mean, if we look at their recipe, uh, what is it? It's just iron sheets and some netherrack, uh, and that's the only additional expense. The rest of the build is going to use the same exact blocks, so these are super, super cheap. Don't let anyone tell you that a steam engine is expensive or complicated, because that's all it is. You're going to place your fluid tanks on top. Now, I'm going to do a 3x3, three three, since with the blaze burners, the more blaze burners you have, the better this is going to be. And why don't we build this up like four or maybe even five, right? 
But to know how good we're doing, of course, we need to place a steam engine on top of it. We can see the size is really good. This is going to still only require 10 millibuckets per tick. We only need one water source. And the heat isn't good enough right now because, well, these are passive sources. They're not lit. But if we take our coal uh, or charcoal or any burnable thing, wood, whatever you want, light these guys up. And do make sure to get the guy in the center as well. We can see, is our heat good? No. Okay, this is too big for the heat. That's fine. Take off a layer. Uh, so it looks like, yeah, there we go. Heat's perfect. So you want this one to be four tall, right? Obviously, I knew that, but if you're ever eyeballing a steam engine, that's the process. That's that's how you can test your steam engines out, because these guys each add heat, these guys each add size, and then, of course, we need our 10 millibuckets of water, and you're going to find that it's a fairly similar build. And just remember, with your infinite water sources, that the pump is facing towards the water that is infinite, not one of the edges, and make sure you're using a wrench to face it in the right direction. You obviously don't want to be attempting to pull water out of the steam engine. That is not going to help you at all. All right, so this is the steam engine, but of course this isn't an infinite steam engine because look at that. The blaze burners, they've ran out. They're not functioning anymore. We need to power these guys, and there's a bunch of different ways to do it. Uh, one of the best ways is either with a tree farm that converts into charcoal or a lava farm. And as many of us know, a super easy lava farm is dripstone over cauldrons. And this works extremely well with the create mod because of how uh, pipes will function with cauldrons. So this becomes a supremely automatic lava farm. For those that don't know, you just need to place down some dripstone blocks and then, or rather these are, yeah, dripstone blocks with dripstones underneath of them. Make sure they are hovering above cauldrons. Now, the more of these you add, the faster your farm is, and you do want to have a decently fast one. Uh, if your lava farm isn't fast enough, then, of course, it will break. Your steam engine will stop because your blaze burners will run out of fuel. Uh, make sure to place... I believe it does have to be sources. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but you do want to place yourself some lava sources on top of the dripstone, so you're going to need some lava to start with. Um, but they will start, you can see they're dripping, they're dripping, they're dripping lava into the cauldrons. That is not bad. And you know what, just for aesthetics, I'm going to extend this out one so it's got a three-wide center instead of a two-wide center. And it lines up very nicely with our little uh, steam engine machine. And now what you can do is come underneath of your cauldrons, dig out a little area so that you could walk around and move around in, and place pipes connected to the bottom of all of them. You can see the pipe will connect to them. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So any liquid inside, it will pull from. Oh, and there we go. There's already a bucket of lava. Awesome. So we want this to go into a spout. That's where we want to direct this. So get yourself a spout hovering over a depot. It is very important that a depot is involved in this. Uh, and we do also now need to have some way to power this mechanical pump. One thing that I actually could do here. Uh, and of course, I'm not going to tell you how to do this, right? This is create mod uh, wiring and stuff like that, routing everything. That's up to you guys to figure out how to do what works in your build. But see, you can see, I'm going to have this exposed here so that I could pull a shaft like so from here and pull it down here with the cog. So I am opting to have my steam engine power itself, right? My steam engine is responsible for power for, for uh, pouring in the water and pouring in the lava. Now that's a convenience, but know that it could be a little dangerous, right? Because if this thing overstresses, it's going to be a huge pain to turn itself back on, right? So do keep that considered. It is definitely safer to put this on a water wheel and to put this on a water wheel. But for the purposes of this video... I'm just going to show you how to power it itself, or that it can power itself. All right, so we've got this all set up. The lava is coming in nice and fast. And, of course, while you're building this, this is going to fill up. That's going to be super helpful, um, very exciting. And uh, for now, you can just place a bucket on the depot because that is what we're going to be using. You're also going to want a brass funnel somewhere on the depot. I'm going to place it here because I can. Make sure it's facing into the depot. And make sure to filter an empty bucket. That's very important. Now, of course, with a brass funnel, 
the steam engine becomes a little bit more expensive. But remember, remember, this can all be accomplished with a tree farm that cooks into charcoal. I'm just showing one way to get infinite fuel for your blaze burners. So if you don't want to deal with brass, if you just want to make a simple tree farm, make a simple tree farm. If you want a tutorial for a simple tree farm, let me know in the comments. But for now, you are going to need yourself a mechanical arm. The mechanical arm is going to take from the depot and make sure that it is targeting all of the blaze burners. And for those of you who know what a mechanical arm does, I think you're going to know what this is going to be doing. What this does is it's going to take the lava bucket from the depot and place it into the blaze burners. It's super helpful, very nice, very fun. And uh, let's think about wiring this. I think I see how I'm going to do it. I'm going to place my mechanical arm there. I'm going to grab myself a vertical gearbox, and I'm going to keep in line with the machine or the engine powering itself, right? I'm just going, yeah, I'm going all in, going all in. Uh, grab that, and grab that, whoop, and grab this, come on, and grab this, there we go. So when that's spinning, this will spin, and we should see this thing moving and grooving all on its lonesome. So I now have to do two things here. I have to power the blaze burners first and then power the mechanical pump. And you know what? I'm going to take my own advice. All right. I'm going to take my own advice and I'm going to put a small windmill on top of this so that it remains powered. A hand crank is definitely not going to be enough to activate all of this. So we are just going to be a little smart about things and make sure that in the event that we're not producing enough lava or that something overstresses the machine, there is an easy way to start it back up, right? Because you know what? In Create, sometimes stuff goes wrong. Sometimes you misjudge things. And as long as you've got enough stress units, anything is possible. All right, so here we go. Our water is flowing, uh, but it does seem like the water is not flowing fast enough, right? It's only two millibuckets per tick. That's no good. So we're probably going to want to add quite a bit more sails onto that guy. But just wanted to show proof of concept that the arm is functioning, the pipes are functioning, everything is being powered, and we don't even need the steam engine. And you will see, although it will take a while... When this is filled with lava, the mechanical hand is going to immediately and automatically target it because it knows that the lava can go inside of a blaze burner. So it'll be slow, right? Um, and actually, this is going to highlight a mistake I made. That's right. I actually, I've made a mistake. Uh, I forgot to do something. Okay, here we go. It's going to power the blaze burner, but what I forgot to do was have it target this brass funnel. Because now it doesn't know what to do with the bucket. So unfortunately, we are going to have to break our handy mechanical hand and redo its uh, targeting. It's very, it's very important that, unlike me, you remember to deposit items into the brass funnel. The filter means that it will know to only put the empty bucket in, so you won't get into like a grabbing loop. So be very careful about that. All right, well, we had to do some gear shifting to get there, but we should, yep, there we go, have enough water inside of the machine. Now, even just with one blaze burner currently active, this is already producing 16,000 stress units and spinning extremely fast. If I put the bucket back on the machine, you were going to see this guy spring to absolute life as the mechanical hand goes to power each and every one of the blaze burners. As long as this has lava inside of it, the bucket's going to get filled. And with each one that gets powered, watch as that kinetic stress capacity just skyrockets. The heat point goes up. This is amazing. Now you can see the size is actually not big enough anymore. Uh, once this thing seems kicked into gear, it could use to be a little bit bigger. Something to note, if you're worried about your mechanical hand wasting resources, don't worry. It is actually intelligent enough to know when a blaze burner needs fire. You can see this is full, but all of our blaze burners are happy and satisfied. So it is not doing anything, and we have ourselves a level 9 boiler with 147,000 possible stress units. Now... This will only ever produce up to 16,000. However, because we have so many or so much kinetic capacity, we can now place more steam engines, each of which will be running at full speed and have 16,000 stress units attached to themselves up to uh, reaching the absolute maximum of this. Uh, having a level 9 it typically means that we can afford to have 9 steam engines attached to this one big 
boiler. Looks kind of alien, doesn't it? Yeah, I love these things. They're still super cheap. Once again, you don't need lava. And hey, there are other ways to get infinite lava, like a hose pulley in the nether. Of course, the trick is finding out how to get the lava to the overworld, but I'll let you guys figure that one out. And of course, I took my own advice, and I have a windmill powering the machine instead of itself. Now, it makes it run faster, so it's better when it powers itself, but it does not require it. So I hear you asking, DJojo, this is great and all, but you said there were going to be three tiers of steam engine. How do we go anywhere further than this? That would be blaze cakes. Yes, superheating counts for double the amount of heat. Now, with blaze cakes, you do need cinder flour, and as far as I'm aware, in uh, vanilla create, there is no way to automate netherrack. You can't get netherrack infinitely, which is too bad, but... It produces about one and a half cinder flour, and I did the math. A full double chest of netherrack, which is not difficult to get, could burn for 200 hours in a steam engine. So, you're not too bad. You just need to find a way to automate yourself some, uh, oh, uh, ignore this. This is an add-on that I'll cover at a different time. Uh, sugar, easy. Eggs, easy. Stamp them together. Make the blaze cake base, right? And give yourself infinite blaze cakes. For demonstrative purposes, I am just going to put a bunch of blaze cakes that I creative mode uh, receive into this chest here and show you the amazing power of what a max power steam engine looks like. Look at those blazes go blue and boom. Yeah, check that out. We don't have enough water. Even this pump running at full speed is not enough to sustain the power of an absolute max size steam engine. So, and I know it's pretty expensive, a little bit more water, <laughs> but I think you can manage. We get that guy running and the water goes up. And once again, we are actually being limited by our size. Now, unfortunately, when you're limited by your size like this, that does mean you have to build upwards. So it is a pretty good thing that we have this windmill here uh, so that our machine is not powering itself. See, the machine is not stopping. It is still able to maintain itself, though it has gone down quite a bit. So right now our boiler is at level 12 and our size is good, but we're being limited once again by water. That's right, yes. This machine is, well, a machine. It's an absolute behemoth. You need a ton of water for this guy. Hopefully one more infinite water source will do the trick for us. There we go. With three infinite water sources funneling in this, we have an absolute maximum size steam engine, which produces nearly 300,000 stress units. Uh, and I believe can support, I think it's up to 18 of them before seeing any drop off. And these all can be connected to one another, as you can see. You could, you could hook them all together. Yeah, check it out. Each one of these, still going strong. Yeah. Steam engines are amazing. You gotta make them pretty big, though. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tall, three by three all superheated blazes it this one powers itself because i got a little lazy don't tell anyone but i got a little lazy so i'm having this one power itself um, but as you can see you know infinite lava farms for blaze cake automation and even blaze burner automation they're not too bad they're pretty easy uh just some simple resources nothing that requires you to have more than iron tools i mean even these big guys uh, don't actually require any brass. You wouldn't need the brass funnel here for the blaze cake automation. Oh, and uh, the best part of these, you gotta hook yourself up a uh, little guy, these little steam whistles, give it some power. Oh yeah, that's sweet music. So what do you think of these practical style tutorials, right? We do a little bit of learning together. It's not just me talking at you, but hopefully me teaching you how these work and how to problem solve when tinkering with a steam engine, not just in vanilla create, but in any pack you make. If this is the kind of content you're interested in, well, definitely subscribe, watch the other videos on my channel, like, and most of all, comment. Let me know your voice. It must be heard. But seriously, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something, and I hope to power all of your Create Creations. I just want to use this time to say thank you so much to the members of this channel. They are helping this channel and me become closer and closer to becoming a full-time content creator. So if that's something you'd be interested in, subscribe and become a member.